Okay, so um, on the presentation we just, we just saw, you mentioned uh, like some some helpers and some new features about about uh, the new version of E. And talking with Alexander, I was very happy to hear that they are thinking of providing a template for creating new extensions because I, I struggled <laughs> quite a lot to figure out how how to do it with the um, with the new version of of E. Uh, just mainly because if you remember with version 1.0 you just have to create your folder inside the extension folder and, and mostly that's it then also to register the assets was the same more or less that what, what you will do inside the controller is more or less the same behavior that you would uh, use inside a, an extension while now as you said there's the, the asset bundle and uh, all these new stuff, composer and so on. So, so the auto loading is uh, is working differently. And in, in my case, what I end up uh, doing was uh, including the, the extension manually at the beginning. So uh, until I got to uh, a point where I was happy to to create a to publish it on, on Git on GitHub actually. As, as a reference, let's say that when using Composer, you can use packages, but you can also use your own Git repository, so that's, that's a good thing. But I didn't figure out if it was possible to just use a, a folder on your local machine, and I think it's not possible. Uh, let me know if I'm wrong, because... So, I don't know if uh, someone of you knows this project, but... I started this one in probably 2010 and then got contribution from other people visiting the, the forum and so members of the community and basically the idea is to have a well it was like at the beginning it was on Google Code so but now it's on GitHub so let's say there is a, a repository with a a shared code basically that you can uh, download on your on your machine and try out play with it and then if you end up doing something that can be handy or useful for for other users you can uh, commit your changes back and contribute to, contribute to, to improve it and uh, expand it so adding new new examples new uh, kind of Tutorials, but they're, and they're not tutorials, they're just uh, practical examples. And the cool thing about it, I mean, at least in my opinion, is that the code that you see here is actually the real code. So it's taking it directly from, from this file and it's reading the lines. So it's showing it. It's not that you have to copy and paste the code into, into the view every time you, you change it, that one is taking the code directly from, from that view and this one directly from, from the controller so uh, it's, it's pretty handy because if you then change this line it will get updated on the, uh, on the snippet uh, here as well so. um, and then I started playing with, with the E2, uh, E2 as well and um, there is the, the very early version of it here so now there are no examples yet because I just finished <laughs> porting the extension to for for the syntax highlighter. Things, but we can um, see how it is on 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 GitHub. So basically, you see here we are on the YouTube branch of the project, and for example, we were talking about the array helper. So I use it on on this component because of the okay, the get calling method that is a method that's very similar to what we have in PHP 5.5. So the array calling method. So that we is uh, going through a, an array and grabbing all the values of a specific column of a like subarray and um, I'm doing that to collect the, the list of types that then I will pass to the 
uh, had some text highlight uh, widget. All of you are uh, familiar with packages, so have you ever tried to use it? Mm -hmm. Because this, the great thing is that if you have a GitHub account, it's very easy to use. You just have to log in with your GitHub account, and then once you are, have authorized the GitHub uh, platform to communicate with packages, you can just uh, import your your repositories into GitHub. So uh, when in, in your in your GitHub repo you have your your JSON, your composer.json file that describes the, the package. You, you just have to, to to import, so it's just a matter of one click, and then you, you get it on packages as well. And also you can link it, so when you commit some changes on GitHub, it gets updated uh, automatically on, on packages as well. So it's but very effortless. From packages on your computer or packages on GitHub? No, no, this package is the .org website. I mean. So here, basically, on this website, this is the main repository for um, composer packages, so it's the default one. Probably the, the most like, interesting thing, thing for, for my experience doing, doing this so far has been creating the extension itself. As you can see here, uh, using composer, the, the vendor folder is empty because it's gonna uh, be populated when you when you actually launch composer. And so now when you launch Composer, as you can see from the main Composer JSON right here. So here I am requiring the syntax highlighter extension. So this one is the asset bounder that Gus introduced to you earlier on. And as you can see, that the great thing about this compared to U1 is that you have uh, these properties here that where, where you just have to list the CSS and JS files that you want to include. And when you call the register method, it will take care of, of publish them. And also, uh, if you are specifying a path that is under the web directory, it's taking it directly from there, so without kind of duplicating the code. So it's, it's smart enough to understand if the, the file is reachable uh, like from is public or not. As we saw. So the, the naming of the um, of the folder and file itself should match your uh, your namespace, and this is one rule I didn't actually follow. Um, as you can see, my namespace name is E2 syntax highlighter like that, while following the PSR4 standards should have been like E2 slash uh, syntax highlighter slash, because uh, when you use a dash, you should then in, in your path, you should then convert it to a to slash. Oh. Yeah, to, to, to backslash. Actually. So, yeah. uh, of course, when you then release your your extension, you can specify, you can kind of override it. So, if you look at, at the JSON file on the autoload section, you can still specify the the name of the namespace, so it will understand. Monthly, the, the relation between the, the actual uh, path of your folder because it's, it's this one here the, and the, the next bit basically. And yeah, I don't know if there's some other questions or um, some questions. Too. Yes. Thank you. Good one. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, I'm, I'm more uh, interested in knowing uh, what are the difficulties you encountered in, in porting it. Uh, what is how much effort you have to put into it, and what are the most difficult things you had to overcome? Okay, so for me, since composer was was a new topic, <coughs> uh, composer itself has, uh, itself has been one of the uh, most like the biggest steps. So I, I downloaded the, the basic application, mm -hmm. the, the basic template, the uh, E2 template. Because of course the, the advanced one has like division between the end and front end and so on, and it's not needed for the um, for, for the playground uh, project itself. So uh, I I just download the basic one. The basic one had um, more 
dependencies <laughs> in his uh, composer.json file, like things that are uh, specifically useful for testing, like automatic, automatic testing and so on. And so the first thing I, I did was like adapt the composer.json <laughs> file to my uh, requirements. And then I have run composer update to, uh, to update the, the set of libraries that were, were included. Um, again, if you are not familiar with Composer, <coughs> when you launch Composer, install or Composer update, it will download everything for you and will put it into the vendor folder. And uh, so that, that was uh, the very first thing. The main core components of uh, the playground are this extension and the source collector component. So when it comes to the, um, to the component parts, then before you can just create a new class inside your, your component folder, well now you have to use uh, the uh, created as an object or I don't remember exactly the, the basically there are two options or two classes that you should extend when creating a component. There is Yeah, I think I think it's object and component. So yeah, um, so I have to change it from being a generic class to being a class that extended the, the base object. And then you have all the, when you use the call, uh, uh, the semicolon, semicolon app, mm -hmm. so you now have the just uh, dollar app, and then uh, uh, you have to change all the, those, uh, those methods and calls. So common, common refactoring in this case. Yeah, common refactoring. Then I'm not planning on porting the entirely with the old, uh, old previous example. So I'm I'm more focused on starting kind of from from scratch to a new new example that are based That's on specific the for the yeah, features. But yeah, yeah, you have to get used to the new folder structure also because you have yeah. everything inside the web folder now. Um, I think it's changed it, can't you? Like you can still, I mean, you don't, you don't have to. You can configure. Yeah, 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 yeah probably. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, you have to use namespaces now. So, in terms of your <coughs> playground projects, like sure. you, do you want contributors? Do you want help yeah, from the public or? Well, it is uh, the project started uh, like that. So the idea is to have. Uh, a project that is based on collaboration, so it's open for, for everyone to, to just fork it and then do the change requests. Um, by the way, now on, on this project, as you can see, I did not create a new um, GitHub repo for it, but I just created a branch because the idea is just to work on this branch and that place is, is uh, ready for, for become like the main the main version of it just uh, override, override yeah. completely the, the master branch with this one because uh, we're not going any way to keep two versions of it at the same time. So the, 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 one of the goals of the project from the beginning was to, to stay current and to just uh, support the, the last version of, of it. And of course now we are just anticipating a little bit the, the, the E2 release it's good because I think now the, the interesting part is about T2 more than on, on E1. Of course, maybe for, for the beginners that are looking to use it in, in production, E1 is still more, more appealing. But for long time E developers and for people that started using me some time ago, the uh, interesting bits are about the, the, the new features and the new versions. So. Uh, another cool thing, by the way, is the the end. Uh, <laughs> oh. the, end, <laughs> the, the definition gate. Uh, I have a variable that differentiates different environments mm -hmm. in case you have different stages yeah, and handling different configuration. For yeah. Mm -hmm. one of them. So, I just wanted to to show how the playground works. Basically, as you can see, you can uh, with the source collector component, you can just. 
all these methods there that the set start is just setting the, the line as the start line, then it's counting two lines more, so it's starting from 31 actually, um, to, to collect the code. And then at the same time, of course, this code is being executed. So uh, you're showing it the, the output of the code in first place, and then it's collecting the, this snippet of code because it's reading from here to here and opening the, the actual file. And then he is rendering the search box, so he's rendering the, the snippet of code. So if you change it, if you change something in here, we will be out of the offline mode. And there are other methods that allows you to um, collect the whole code of method for example so you specify the, the name of the file and the name of the method and you will collect the, the name of the method and so on so it's, it's very very easy to, to keep it up to date and according because basically you just play with your with your code and then you say okay I want to show it from here to here and it's done so yeah. uh, did you find it easy to deploy with composer yeah yeah when when you get familiar with it is uh, is very very handy and I think it solves a lot of problems. Um, of course, I cannot say that I'm using it like for a long time because I just started playing with it, so uh, I don't have like um, a solid experience with it. But so far, it's, it looks very nice. And as I said, publishing a package on packages is very easy. I also tried to use it uh, with a git repository and mm -hmm. it works straight yeah. away yeah so you can you can just for example use it with your own internal git repository if you don't want to publish the source code for some reason but of course uh, as uh, Alexander said the, the good thing is that it encourages people to, to collaborate yeah. and publish their code mm -hmm. sure. and also yeah there are a lot of libraries like Bootstrap itself and Jquery and so on that you can include and then you always connect the latest uh, mm -hmm. version of it. So. The, the idea was to uh, structure the, the menu so that it follows the, the topics of the, of the guide because I think it's more more easy that way if we just follow the, the topics on the guide and for each topic we, we show how to. Uh, I should actually use it, yeah. Okay. That's it. Great. Well done. Yeah, thank nice you. Nice one.